Hey everybody, Guru Paul here of Two Expats Mexico, and today I'm going to be showing you how to boost your Spanish vocabulary a bit by converting verbs you already know into the past participle. I realize that term past participle may sound like a foreign language to some folks, so I'm going to show you what that means. Take a look at these sentences uh, I put up here on the board. The past participle is shown in bold in both the English and Spanish translation. The bread was eaten by rats. Eaten would be the past participle. Take a look at the Spanish translation under it. El pan fue comido por ratas. Comido would be the past participle of comer, which means to eat. In sentences like this one, and this one is actually in the passive voice. I have another video on that, the passive voice with ser. The thing I want to point out is that your past participle needs to agree in number and gender with the noun. So in this one, it's el pan. It's masculine singular. So that's why it's comido. Let's go on to the next sentence. The houses were built by pilgrims. Las casas fueron construidas por peregrinos. And the verb is construir. Now it's las casas, a feminine plural. So we have to have construidas. Let's look at our last one. The city was invaded by soldiers. La ciudad fue invadida por soldados. So it comes from invadir, which means to invade, and it's invadida because la ciudad is feminine and singular. I don't just have to use past participles in the passive voice. Take a look at these little phrases. They're not even sentences anymore because I took out the verb to be from all of it. So they're just phrases, and our past participles become regular old adjectives. So I get... The bread eaten by rats. El pan comido por ratas. The houses built by pilgrims. Las casas construidas por peregrinos. The city invaded by soldiers. La ciudad invadida por soldados. You can plug these kinds of things in and they'll be easy to remember because you can see the English and Spanish constructions are very similar. Let's take a look at how you convert your verbs into the past participle. Again, if you watch my video on using the passive voice with ser in Spanish, you've already seen this. So first we're going to cover regular AR verbs. Regular just means that they follow this pattern. And AR verbs refers to the ending. There are three types of verbs in Spanish, ones that end with AR, ones that end with ER, and ones that end with IR. So we're going to cover AR first. All we're going to do is drop the AR and add ADO. That would just be the masculine singular, of course. You would have to make it agree in number and gender when you actually plug it in. So, hablar to speak, hablado. Pintar to paint, pintado. Cerrar to close, cerrado. Confrontar to confront, confrontado. See, it's not that difficult. All right, let's go on to regular ER and IR verbs. And yes, they're done the same way, which is helpful. You're going to just drop your ending and put ido. Bebir, to live, bebido. Construir, to construct, construido. Tener, to have, tenido. Dormir, to sleep, dormido. If every verb in Spanish uh, followed these rules, life would be easy. But as we know, life's not always easy. There are irregular verbs, meaning they're going to have a different past participle. Here's a list of the very common ones you're likely to see. Poner, which means to put. Puesto. Hacer, to do or to make. Hecho. Abrir, to open. Abierto. Escribir, to write. Escrito. Romper, to break. Roto. Morir, to die, muerto. Cubrir, to cover, cubierto. Ver, to see, visto. The thing with irregular verb conjugations is you just have to learn them one at a time. And that could be frustrating, so I encourage you to take a screenshot or write these down or even take a picture of your screen, however you want to do it, so you can study them later. All right, let's move on. Now it's your turn to practice. There are three English phrases on the screen and the partial translation of each below. The only thing you have to do is to take the verb in parentheses and change it into the past participle. Now remember, these are becoming adjectives, so they're going to have to agree in number and gender with the noun. Our phrases are the book written by Edgar Allan Poe, the ship boarded by pirates, 
Stories Told by Children. Now, if you want more time to write these down, I encourage you to pause the video at this point. Otherwise, we're going to move on. Here are our answers. The book written by Edgar Allan Poe. El libro escrito por Edgar Allan Poe. Escrito is in the masculine singular because el libro is masculine singular. Number two, the ship boarded by pirates. El barco abordado por piratas. And our third one, stories told by children. Historias contadas por niños. You see, it's contadas. That's feminine plural. Why? Because it's describing historias, which is feminine plural. See, it's not that difficult, right? Here are three more. The city constructed in 1972. You'll be able to practice your dates on that one. The fingerprints left by the female thief and the cars parked near the beach. Pause the video if you need to. If not, we're going to move on. Here are the answers. The city constructed in 1972. La ciudad construida en 1972. The fingerprints left by the female thief. Las huellas digitales dejadas por la ladrona. And the cars parked near the beach. Los carros estacionados cerca de la playa. See, all of our um, past participles are now adjectives and agree in number and gender with the noun that they describe. Here are our last three for the day. The books placed on the table. The languages spoken in the world. I know that's not an error. It is los idiomas. And the secrets revealed by the experts. Feel free to pause the video now. If not, here we go. Here are the answers. The books placed on the table. Los libros colocados en la mesa. The languages spoken in the world. Los idiomas hablados en el mundo. The secrets revealed by the experts. Los secretos revelados por los expertos. So how'd you do? Did you have some trouble with that second one because the noun ended with an A, but it was really masculine? Not every noun in Spanish is, that ends with an O is going to be masculine, and not every one that ends with an A is going to be feminine. El idioma, language, belongs to a group of words that tend to end in M-A, P-A, or T-A, so we call them mapata words, and they're masculine. Now, not every Spanish noun that ends in M-A-P-A or T-A is masculine. You just kind of have to learn these as you go. Here are some common ones. El idioma, language. El tema, theme or subject. El planeta, planet. El mapa, map. El programa, program. El enigma, enigma or mystery. Well, that's the end of our lesson. If you enjoyed it, all I ask is you hit the like button. And if you didn't enjoy it, don't hit anything. Until next time, hasta luego.